everyone. Welcome to Ag PhD. I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for joining us today. I don't care what crop you're raising. You want to have more protein. You want to have more test weight in that crop. How can you do that? We're going to talk about that on the show today. Of course we are, Brian, because we're going to talk about insecticides that you can use on corn. We're going to stop those bugs from robbing your yield and destroying your crop. We saw so many corn rootworms and other secondary insects in corn this year. It was crazy. All right, so later in the show, we've got a Weed of the Week, as we always do, and an Iron Talk as well. But first, here's this week's Farm Basics. How much yield and profit did you lose the moment you put your seed in the ground? A poor stand at planting keeps your crops from reaching their yield potential, and closing the seed trench behind the planter is essential to establishing a good crop stand. The Germinator Closing Wheel from Farm Shop MFG is here to give your crop the strong start it needs for maximum yield. Act now to receive an early order rebate plus free shipping. Get ready for spring planting with the Germinator Closing Wheel. For more information, visit farmshopmfg.com. During our Farm Basics time today, we're going to talk about one of the questions we get commonly from non-farmers, that's how fast can farmers actually do some of these operations they're doing in the field, everything from planting to harvest? Well, one thing about it, if you're driving a tractor, you need to buckle your seatbelt because you're going to be moving fast. Like for example, if you're putting tile in the ground, you're probably rolling along at a mile per hour, Brian? I mean, it's fast. <laughs> All right, so the slowest job that we do on our farm is tiling, and yes, we are commonly running one mile per hour, but that's a whole different deal than almost everything else we're doing. A lot of these operations happen in the field in the range of four to five miles an hour with planting and harvest, up to maybe 10 to 15 miles an hour with spraying. Well, and when you think about it, when you see tractors out on the road, they're driving pretty slow, right? Many of them are in road gear going as fast as they can. So it's not like our tractors could drive 60 miles an hour to begin with. But still, when we're out in the field, we have to slow down a little bit to make sure that we're doing the job just right. Now, Brian mentioned the sprayer being one of the things that runs probably the fastest through the field, and that's fine, but you got to look at that spray and what it's doing on the crop. And if a farmer sees, you know, I'm not getting good coverage, he may have to slow down and other times, especially spraying bare dirt, he may be able to go a little faster. Yeah, and it's also going to vary an awful lot with how big the equipment really is. So we're typically trying to size the tractor to the planter, the tillage equipment, whatever it is we are pulling. But in some cases, and even this happens on our own farm, we're a little undersized with the tractor. So then you end up going three miles an hour instead of the five miles an hour you might like to go. But again, most operations in the field, other than of course tiling, are gonna happen in that range of roughly four to five miles an hour on the low end to 10 to 15 at the high end with spring. Well, one of the things farmers may be out in the field spraying for is our weed of the week. Can you identify this week's weed? I need results, so I choose the one system I trust to take weeds down and keep them down on even my toughest acres with the kind of yield potential that helps keep me in the black to deliver my kind of results season after season. I choose the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System. I choose results. It's been remarkable what we've seen out of the varieties of Extend soybeans, the yield has come through for us. We had the best soybean crop we've ever had. The yields were there. With the Roundup Ready Extend Crop System, the yield boost and the lack of weed pressure really helps our bottom line. The technology has exceeded my expectations. It's one thing that the industry has been looking for for years. There's nothing like harvesting record crops. Ideal for herbicide applications, the Ultra Low Drift's large air inducted droplets were designed to eliminate driftable fines without sacrificing coverage. Its thick three-dimensional pattern creates multiple angles for the spray to cover the target. Hypro, helping you spray better. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whenever you want, in your life and on your farm, Case IH AFS Connect gives you more control, 
Monitor your operation, manage your fleet and your farm data your way. Case IH, rethink productivity. To expand your farm's grain handling, you want everything to be fast and efficient. The Quick Belt from Norwood Sales is your all around grain handling solution. Our conveyor based system uses an 18 inch belt and a 10 inch tube, which minimizes seed damage while moving more than 10,000 bushels an hour. That's fast enough to fill a semi in six minutes. Plus, our hood is designed to gently direct the flow of grain straight down, keeping your crop in condition. Keep your grain and your farm moving with the Quick Belt from Norwood Sales. How can you increase the protein level and the test weight in your crop? Well, this isn't super easy, but there are a few steps we can talk to you about that hopefully will help you on your farm. One of the things that I've learned, Brian, over all my years as an agronomist, as I travel around the world talking with agronomists and talking to great farmers, when they have a problem in their crop, they start looking at, all right, let's look at all the essential nutrients and let's see what functions they play in the plant. And then let's look at what parts of my farm I don't have that problem in at all and see what nutrients are high in those areas. And what we see as you look through all the functions of nutrients, yeah, we look at protein building and test weight and those kinds of things, and certainly think about nitrogen and sulfur, but there are a lot of micronutrients that come into play and secondary nutrients as well. So taking good soil samples and pulling plant tissue analysis through the growing season are two tools that are being underutilized in terms of figuring out some of these problems like test weight and like protein. All right, I wanna take this one step further. You have all the data you need on your farm, probably already. If you've been doing soil tests and if you have a yield monitor on your combine, you need to marry up those two things. We've done that on our farm the last two years on over 2,000 grid points each year. And here's what I can tell you. When you start comparing the soil test results versus the yield results, you start to figure out very, very quickly what's going to make a difference in terms of yield. But also, you could take that a step further and take a look at test weight, because hopefully you're able to measure test weight. And if you wanted to, you could take some samples in each one of these spots on your farm. Maybe it is only 10 or 20 or something like that. But if you go right to grid points, you take some of that grain right at that grid point for the soil test and send it in for protein analysis, well now you would be able to compare protein with what's the fertility in my field at that point. All right, now let's just start with a couple of easy ones here, nitrogen and sulfur. Both are leachable nutrients and when we're talking about test weight and protein levels, a lot of that comes down to having those two big pieces in place late in the season as your plant needs them. So you've got to look at your fertility program and say, okay, when does my nitrogen go on? When does my sulfur go on? And if the answer is, well, I put those on last fall and in the summer, I want to try and make test weight and protein. Well, chances are you're probably not maxing what your crop could do. Now, if you said, well, I don't put them on in the fall, but I do put them all on at planting time in the spring. That too can be a challenge, especially if you have a year like 2019 was for many growing areas where we just had way too much rainfall. So getting those applications made closer to the time where the crop is going to use them certainly has some merit. Maybe, and this is the whole thing. There's no one right answer in agriculture. It all depends on your environment. Uh, let's talk very specifically here about a crop. Let's take wheat. I get calls every year from lots of farmers saying, my protein levels are bad. How do I increase protein levels? By far and away, the number one thing is having available nitrogen late in the season for that wheat crop. Now, Darren made the comment about apply it more toward when it's needed. Well, that's all fine to say, but what if you don't get any rain? What if you top dressed it and don't get any rain? Then it's not going to work. So 
I agree that we a lot of times will say apply it a little bit later, but we have to be real careful about saying that to everybody. So if in your situation you don't control the moisture, so in other words you don't have irrigation, and you are strictly counting on Mother Nature to give you rainfall, you have to look at well when do I normally get the rain, how much rain do I get, and now you're starting to gamble a little bit with I want to get it on early enough so I get rain, but I don't want to put all my eggs into that one basket either. I would also say this because you might say, well, I never put nitrogen on late. I don't even put all that much nitrogen on. My protein levels are high. Don't forget, your soil produces its own nitrogen. How it does that is by mineralizing soil organic matter. And if you have lots of organic matter in your soil, then you will get lots of nitrogen out of there for free every year. In the Midwestern United States, we usually figure 20 to 30 pounds of nitrogen for every 1% of organic matter. So if you have 5% organic matter, that's 100 to 150 pounds of nitrogen you get for free every year. So having good soil health is basically what you're saying, Brad. If we got good soil health, we can get good mineralization. The other thing is sunlight. Here's another thing that costs you nothing. The sun is going to shine some days, we hope. How do you maximize what sunlight your plants are going to capture? Well, keeping leaves clean, like we talk about protecting the flag leaf or protecting the ear leaf in corn. These are really important because now we can catch more sunlight and that's going to result in more yield, more protein, more test weight. All those things will be good if we can capture that sunlight. And then the final piece of that is good nutrient balance. We've got to keep that plant healthy and alive as long as we possibly can. If we run short of any essential nutrient, including the micronutrients, we're not going to maximize what we're doing out in the field. When it comes to test weight, there are a couple of things I think about. Number one is planting the right maturity for your area. If you get a frost prior to when that plant gets finished, when like the corn gets to black layer or the soybeans are fully developed, well then of course you're going to have lower test weight, so that's huge. But the second thing is really the fertility side, and for us on our farm, that was potassium. Now phosphorus, super important also, but potassium, ridiculously important. You want your levels at least 4% base saturation K, and for big time yields and big time test weight, I'd say you need to be in the 6 to 8% base saturation K range. Also Darren mentioned micronutrients zinc, manganese, iron, copper, boron. Make sure you have not just levels there, but good levels. And if you're going to build your P and K up to really high levels, well guess what? Your micronutrients need to be at really high levels as well. Well there's a lot of information there about building test weight, building proteins, Ultimately, it's going to help your yield overall too. Getting that nutrient balance right, getting the nutrients there at the right time for your plants too so they can utilize them. That will put the building blocks in place for a great crop this next season. But one other thing you'll definitely need to have if you want to have good crops is control of our Weed of the Week. We'll show you how to stop it coming up later in the show. Every day we rise, we face the pressure, the uncertainty, Sometimes the decisions we make seem as tough as the work we do. Let the Acceleron portfolio lighten your load with a powerful array of seed treatments, fungicides, insecticides, nematicides, and bioenhancers offered in select combinations to give you coverage with one simple decision. Looking for a little peace of mind? We're on it. There are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plan be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. Introducing the all new Diamant Cornhead from Capello USA. With a revolutionary design highly innovative for its class, we have painstakingly designed every component down to the smallest detail to maximize your harvest efficiency. This gives you unprecedented standards in operation and performance. To get a hands-on look at this beast featuring our new gray poly design, join us at the National Farm Machinery Show in Louisville, Kentucky, February 12th through the 15th. Capello, wherever you are, we are. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. 
and use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBearPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. Where we have run the Soil Warrior, we have harvested the best corn we have ever harvested in the history of Renwood Farms. Now, I'm kind of always wanting to push the envelope to see what else I can do to help enhance that emergence. Their ride is so much smoother. Their seed placement is even better. Where we had our best emergence and we've had our best yields was where we ran the Soil Warrior. Should you use a corn insecticide this year? Well, maybe, maybe not. We're gonna talk through some of the things you might wanna take a look at on your farm, including whether or not you should use liquid or dry, and if you have to do this with the planter, or if there's some other way you can apply insecticide. I'd love to go back in time on Ag PhD and see when we started talking about, hey, there's this rootworm BT in development. We're so excited, we can't wait till this comes out because we may not have to use insecticide with the planter anymore. Well, that was kind of true for a little while. Unfortunately, now there's a lot of resistance to single and even starting to be some resistance to stacked rootworm BT traits. So if you say, well, I'm just gonna plant this stacked rootworm BT trait and I'm just gonna be 100% fine for control on rootworm, I wouldn't put all my eggs in that basket anymore. I'd start thinking about, you know, I probably better have some insecticide out there too to kill some of those rootworms before they have to take a bite out of my plants. I'm super happy that the BTs have worked like they have, but to Darren's point, the resistance keeps building with one, so then they develop another. So the resistance builds there. They, they develop some other, and it's, it's just a protein, just different proteins. But you know, it's nice that we don't have to spray insecticide or don't have to apply insecticide a lot of times but here's the trouble. Number one, there is resistance. And number two, there are a lot of pests that we can't control with these BTs. So insecticides in a lot of cases are really nice. Let's talk about some of those other bugs too. I'm really concerned about cutworm protection because you know we've been relying on the BT products to help us with the cutworm. We can certainly get some assistance out of different insecticides that we could be applying. We've also got seed corn beetles and seed corn maggots and wireworms that have been really at high populations. And what are we relying on to control them? The neonics and the seed treatment mainly because we aren't getting a whole lot of control out of anything else that we're doing later. So unless you've got some insecticide you're putting in the soil at planting time, you're gonna have problems with those. And of course, we've got some resistance to the above ground BTs developing as well with different bugs, including corn borers. So right. we've got a lot of things to protect against. Yeah, the big one I think about is white grubs. There is no BT that's even gonna come close to touching a white grub. And white grub issues are growing across the United States because as a general statement, we're doing less tillage. Less tillage means we have more bug issues. So for all these reasons, we would just encourage you to take a look at using some insecticide on your farm. Now, rootworm is by far and away the number one pest, but you have to look at all these other things too, and it just depends on your area. So look at your area, look at what you're susceptible to, and then try to make that determination. But all I can tell you is this, insecticides really don't cost that much money, and especially as you start going for really big time yield, you have to have a great stand, you have to have a great root system, you have to have good stalks and good leaves to get that kind of yield. Most planters today though, Brian, are not coming with insecticide as a standard feature with insecticide application equipment. So we're adding things on aftermarket. Probably the easiest thing to add on is a liquid tank and a liquid system. Many farmers are doing that to put on in furrow fertilizer already anyway. So you could do that for a product like Capture LFR, for example, or uh, a number of different variations of that product that FMC has developed. You've got technology there that mixes with fertilizer pretty well and can be delivered right in the row and is safe to the seed. Here's one other thing I'm gonna throw out too. 
Should we use insecticide maybe in soybeans? Should we be using Capture LFR not just in corn, but should we use it in soybeans? So I realize our topic is corn and we're looking at insect issues in corn here, but I want you to think about everything you possibly could use these insecticides for. Because to Darren's point, a lot of these things have come down in price. When you can use liquid insecticide, especially like Capture LFR, it does not cost much money per acre. All right, it does cost a little more for the dry products. We do really like the control we get with Force and Aztec. Those are available in a variety of different ways, including in the smart box systems. That's probably the more popular way that farmers are adding onto the planter. Uh, there's the new Thrive 3D system that we're going to be using on our planter too, uh, that turns Capture LFR into a foam that has 50 times more coverage in the furrow. I'm really excited about that and the difference that can make. And Force Evo, there's a totally different system to apply that product. So you can get Force in a completely different way. Many of these are set up so you only have to fill one time time a day, if that, you can cover a lot of acres on a single fill, which is a really nice feature too. So our point here is if you don't have insecticide on that planter, that should not prevent you from using something out there for an insecticide because a lot of these systems, the companies will pay for them or pay for a portion of them to get that on your planter. And like in the case of Capture LFR, you can throw it right into your fertilizer tank with the liquid fertilizer you're using. And by the way, in furrow would be a better placement for insecticide than two by two. Well, there should be a lot of consideration going into 2020 about which insecticide you'll be using in your cornfields. Unfortunately, they do kill bugs, but they don't stop our Weed of the Week. We'll show you what will coming up next. The Weed of the Week is brought to you by Corteva AgriScience, Agriculture Division of Dow DuPont. Finish the fight against tough weeds with the Enlist Weed Control System. Weeds are tough, but we're tougher with unrivaled weed control, reduced drift, and near zero volatility. So, who's tough now? <laughs> Our Weed of the Week is Volunteer Wheat. All right, Brian, uh, we don't need to go over identification at all. You certainly know what wheat <laughs> looks like, but here's one of the things I want to say. Don't use fall atrazine to stop volunteer wheat. I, I've talked to so many growers that have said, well, I use fall atrazine applications to stop my volunteer wheat. First of all, we don't want to use atrazine in this way at all. And number two, why would you use atrazine when there's so many other inexpensive products that you could use that'll work better? All right, so usually what we recommend to people is Roundup, but here's the problem. With most grasses, maybe 12 ounces, 16 ounces of Roundup, it's gonna wipe out every grass there is if it's an annual grass. Well, you say, wheat's an annual grass. Well, unfortunately, it's gonna take at a bare minimum, 22 ounces of six pound Roundup, but a lot of times I have guys go 32 ounces. It doesn't cost much more, and yeah, in a lot of cases, that's cheaper than atrazine anyway, but go 32 ounces, and also you wanna spray when the weather's kind of warm, so Roundup works a little bit better. Well, I sure like having a broadleaf crop to rotate to, because then you can clean this up easy. You can use any of the grass killers at higher rates, in soybeans, for example. But if you're rotating back to a cereals crop, this is a big problem. You've got to yeah. get this burned down. You've got to eliminate the green bridge or you're going to see some disease issues in that next cereal crop. Hey, here's a question I just got the other day. It was, can I put 40 gallons of 28% together with my Roundup and still expect control in the volunteer wheat? My answer is usually going to be no. You, in effect, have watered down that Roundup too much, so you don't have a concentrated droplet. And the second thing is, 40 gallons of 28% is really going to burn that volunteer wheat and so is it actually going to that roundup going to move down to the growing point i don't think so so i've never seen very good control out of that you can sure try it but if you're going to try it i'd bump that rate to maybe even two quarts of roundup again as brian mentioned roundup's going to be the best tool that you've got so use that in a burn down or in crop in roundup ready crops well, that's it for our weed of the week but stay tuned iron talk is coming up next 
there are a lot of steps to having a perfect season. Don't let your fertilizer plant be the step that trips you up. No matter when you apply fertilizer, no matter how, AgroLiquid has the experts and the products that'll help you move closer to your target and hit the bullseye. AgroLiquid moves you closer to your target. It's no secret that Mother Nature doesn't always cooperate with your schedule. Field conditions in recent years kept many from timely planting and fertilizing. And when you can't get your fertilizer applied, you lose thousands of dollars in yield potential. If you need flexibility in your fertility application timing, you need a drop tube system from CNR Supply. CNR drop tubes allow you to apply liquid nitrogen in season and place it exactly where your crop needs it. To learn more about low-cost CNR drop tube solutions, visit crsupply.com. More choices, more money. With Bayer Plus Rewards, you choose from our broad portfolio of high-performance products. Earn more money on the eligible products that are right for your farm. And use our new portal to see your purchases, track your rewards, and decide how you want to use them. Visit MyBayerPlus.com to sign in and start earning. That's the advantage of more control in your hands. That's the plus. Challenging field conditions often make harvest difficult. Can your corn head handle it? The GTS X10 corn head from Agra US is a rugged, cost-effective alternative to heavier, more traditional heads. Constructed of durable yet lightweight aluminum, the X10 puts less strain on your combine without losing harvest effectiveness. And it is 40% lighter than traditional heads, reducing field compaction in those less than ideal conditions. For more information, give us a call at 8334-AGRA US. How much does your crop residue cost you? Over time, residue accumulates in your fields, building excess carbon levels and tying up your plant available nitrogen. Residue also traps P, K, and micros and can take years to naturally become available to your crops. This is because soil lacks the diverse microbial life needed to break it all down. With Decomp, you can naturally restore life to your soil and allow the release of valuable crop fertility. Learn more about Decomp at eggbio.solutions. Iron Talk is brought to you by Case IH. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, whenever you want, in your life and on your farm, Case IH AFS Connect gives you more control. Monitor your operation, manage your fleet and your farm data. Your way. Case IH. Rethink productivity. In some parts of the country, it looks as though farmers may be planting into some wet conditions. I'll address the issue in today's Iron Talk. When it's time to plant and soils are wet, you can only realistically wait so long. I'm not encouraging anyone to mud the crop in, but at some point, you'll probably end up planting even if conditions aren't perfect. With the size of planters growing dramatically, and with central fill units becoming much more prevalent, the four tires taking the brunt of that weight are driven into your soil, creating ruts that severely limit the yield of the rows on either side of them. We've used a two-row combine for harvesting our small replicated research plots. The results we've seen are similar to the data coming from universities and other researchers. Yield loss on those rows on either side of deep compaction can easily be 10 to 25% or more. On 200 bushel corn, that could be 50 bushels of loss. We've heard farmers talking about two solutions this winter. Number one, they could switch back to individual boxes for each row. This would spread the weight load out evenly across the planter. The second one that we've heard a lot about is to switch to tracks on the planter rather than wheels to spread the load out. Of course, using both solutions would be the best of all, but since most people don't want to give up their central fill units, well, you can see the dilemma. Think about this going into the spring, especially if you were out trying to fix compaction from your planter with a tillage pass last fall. That's all for today's Iron Talk, and now, back to the show. That's all the time we have for today's show, but before we go, we want to invite you to check out the Ag PhD radio show. We're on Sirius XM channel 147 at 2 p.m. Central each weekday. And please watch the next Ag PhD TV show as well. We'll have another Weed of the Week, Farm Basics, Iron Talk, and a whole lot more. 
I'm Darren Hefty. And I'm Brian Hefty. Thanks for watching Ag PhD.